All right, everyone. Thank you for your patience. My name is Holly Bokey, and I am the Family and Community Partnership Coordinator for the school district. Joining me tonight is Dr. Diane Carver, the Director of Career and College Readiness, and also Beatrice Villarreal, who is our interpreter. I'll introduce our guests in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, this has been a journey of bringing you these monthly getting ready for career and college events. We are calling these Parent Academy events. I will let Beatrice uh, interpret. Bueno, buenas noches. El día de hoy vamos a continuar con nuestra, con nuestra serie de eventos eh, para los padres, de eventos académicos. Y el día de hoy tenemos varias invitadas. Está con nosotros Diane Carver, que es eh, la persona encargada del de, eh, área de las carreras aquí en el distrito de Clover Park. Tenemos a Holly Borky que es eh, la encargada del de área de las eh, relaciones familiares y, y de la comunidad. Tenemos también a Monique eh, Gilmore, que ella es la eh, psicóloga nacionalmente certificada a nivel nacional. Y por último tenemos a Abby Smith. Eh, Abby Smith que ella es la eh, gerente del programa y de servicios especiales de Puget Sound, eh, servicios del Distrito Educacional. Great. We are going to start our interpretation at this moment. You will see a world icon at the bottom of your screen. Vamos a comenzar ahorita con los servicios de interpretación. Ustedes en la parte de abajo de su pantalla van a ver una figura de un mundo en donde ustedes le tienen que dar clic para que ustedes puedan escuchar la eh, interpretación de esta noche. So I'll have Diane start that. When the world, and I think Beatriz just explained this, when the world icon comes up, then please click on that. Y cuando aparezca el mundo, eh, usted... All right, so that means it's working because we can't hear her anymore. If you have clicked the Spanish interpretation, then you are hearing what she is saying. I'm watching her to know when she's done. Great, okay. I'd like to introduce our two guests for this evening for our presentation. Abby Smith is a program manager with the Puget Sound Educational Service District where she is with special services. And also joining us is Monique Gilmore, a nationally certified school psychologist. And both will be presenting our event tonight, especially for those students, many of you, or maybe you have a student and you thought maybe college wasn't an option for you. But we are here to tell you that there are many roads many paths to college. And so I'm going to begin with you, Abby, and I'll let you take it away. Thank you so much for being with us. You are so welcome. And um, please let me know if I need to pause for uh, the interpreter. Um, I'm Abby Smith. I'm going to be going over transitioning from high school to college. Um, I hope this information is helpful. I'm excited to present. Um, the next few slides I want to give credit are from a presentation from um, that Kim Thompson gave um, from Seattle University at the Puget Sound Educational Service District in 2018. So when students are um, in high school and looking forward to their future, they have many paths. Um, there's multiple post high school options. There's um, work. Um, trade and certificate programs, pursuing something through CTE. Uh, students could take a gap year, um, look into apprenticeships, two year colleges, four year universities, online programs, especially with COVID, and also um, community colleges. I want to make sure to emphasize that all are valid choices depending on the fit and the student and their goals. So, if a student chooses to continue academic work post high school, 
they need to understand the differences between high school and college. And so I think um, this is a good time to refresh this information. Sometimes it's easy to forget um, when you have kids, what exactly is different. Um, so here we go. High school versus college. So um, we know that high school is free and it's mandatory. Um, parents have authority. If there's concerns, the administration will go to the parents. Attendance is mandatory. Um, teachers monitor student progress, and hopefully we, our students are helping to monitor some of their progress as well. Um, teachers initiate contact and assistance. And um, as far as accommodations, we have, um, among other things, shortened assignments and reading, time to work on assignments in class, and teachers provide information if a student misses a class. A teacher will seek out a student generally if the student doesn't come to the teacher. However, in college, um, we know that it costs money and it's voluntary. Students have autonomy and participation is mandatory. Oftentimes, um, attendance is taken and, and professors will sometimes um, decide that um, if you're not there for the information, that is your loss. Um, students need to monitor their own progress. Students initiate contact with instructors and request assistance. Um, there are long assignments and lots of reading, all of which is generally done outside of class. And then if a student misses an assignment, they need to obtain the information that they missed from their classmates. And continuing on, um, in high school, you frequently have um, direct contact with your instructor. They're in your classroom. Sometimes they're tracking you down. This might be your case manager as well. Um, in high school, generally, there's a smaller class size and a built-in support system with school counselors, um, college and career specialists, teachers who've known you. Maybe you've had their um, with students' siblings. Um, there's a lot of external motivation and time is really structured and there is a lot of time in class generally for in class work. Um, and then also um, some districts allow for opportunities for extra credit and um, the curriculum can really be modified to meet a student's needs. In college it's pretty pretty different. Um, you have decreased contact with the instructor. Sometimes the class is taught by a teacher's assistant. Sometimes it's taught by the instructor themselves. Classes are larger. Students need to build their own support system. They need to really be able to advocate for themselves. They must find internal motivation. So students need to want to be there. Um, the more a student wants to be at the program and engages themselves in the program, the more successful they'll be. Um, time is very unstructured. Uh, most work is done outside of class and grades really reflect mastery as outcomes as outlined in the syllabus. And the curriculum is not modified. So the laws are different too. In um, high school, um, students and their families are governed by IDEA from the K to 12 system. And um, this is a responsibility to provide a free and appropriate public education that's geared towards specially designed instruction at no cost to the family to meet the unique needs of a child with a disability. And then section 504 of the Rehab Act states, um, it mandates equal access to education programs that receive federal dollars. Um, at the post-secondary college level, we, we continue to have 504, so we wanna have equal access, um, but we also have the Americans with Disabilities Act, which prohibits discrimination based on disability. And it applies to all institutions that are federally funded, um, excluding education institutions that are controlled by religious entities. So there is a difference there. Um, in high school, schools must do testing and qualify a student for special education services. And the IEP manager or counselor sets up the accommodations with the team. In college, the student is really responsible for self-identifying themselves to the Disability Student Services Office and providing current documentation. The college is not going to seek out the student and ask for paperwork. 
Um, the student is responsible for requesting accommodations each quarter. And um, professors or instructors are not going to know who formerly had an IEP and who did not. Student information is confidential and is not acceptable by the instructors. So in college, um, remembering that accommodations simply provide an alternative way to accomplish the course requirements by eliminating or reducing disability related barriers, um, they, they provide a level playing field, not an unfair advantage. So in college, accommodations provide access. Students need to self-advocate. Um, using their accommodations is a choice. They do not have to use accommodations if they don't want to. Um, program curriculum and requirements are not modified though. And accommodations must be requested every term. And faculty members expect students to be able to discuss their learning needs. So it's really important that your student be able to um, explain their disability, what supports they need to be successful with the Disability Student Services Office. Um, so that information can be shared with um, professors. So examples of accommodations in college would be um, somewhat similar to ones provided in high school. So we have extra time on tests distraction, reduced environment. So some colleges provide um, alternative testing sites, um, possibly at the Disability Student Services Office. Um, some provide note takers or lecture um, uh, audios, um, priority registration, adaptive technology, interpreters, alternate text formats, large print and braille. Accommodations at the college level need to be reasonable. So schools must make sure the accommodation is offered unless it would alter or remove essential requirements, fundamentally alter the nature of the program, impose undue financial or administrative burden or pose a threat to others. Um, and a fundamental alteration would be something that is substantially altering the nature of the school or its programs or services. So all of that said, um, here are some tips for supporting your students um, as they pursue their post-secondary plans in college, if that's their choice, um, to know the difference between what's um, afforded between IDEA and the ADA um, and 504 programs. Um, make sure that they are visiting the college, asking questions, and that they know where the Disability Student Service Office is, and know that their office is to inquire, ensure, sorry, equal access, not ensure success of the student, which is different from high school. Um, not all colleges offer the same accommodations, so it's best to check things out at a time when you visit the school. There are a lot of schools right now that you can also visit virtually. Understand the impacts of FERPA. So in high school, families can call and request information about how their student is doing, hold meetings. Um, in college, um, parents don't have access to this. The school will not give information to the family without the direct um, permission from the student. Um, and oftentimes this is a um, surprise to families. So it's something to be aware of. Um, help your student build support systems, encourage them to um, start the process early. Middle school is not too early to start exploring um, post-secondary options. Um, the more um, you explore options, the earlier, the better. Encourage your student to become socially involved in the school of their choice. The more socially engaged your student is, the generally the more successful they will be. And then, um, Realize that seat time and effort don't determine grades. So oftentimes in high school, if you're in class and participating, um, there's a, um, a higher likelihood that you'll master the outcomes demonstrated through the assessment. Um, but in the post-secondary setting, you need to, um, I'm sorry, master the outcomes from the, um, the class that you're in. Um, additionally, um, Depending on the needs of your student, colleges do not have, uh, college students do not have access to one-on-one -on -one aids or um, support with independent living skills, um, bathing, dressing, 
it's really important that you connect your student um, with the campus so they know where the supports are that they will need. Um, the Disability Student Services Office, the maybe the health center, the um, library, any tutoring programs, or um, sometimes there's writing centers that will um, help support students with their writing and proofreading. So um, being that um, students are entering into a different environment, some of the more common frustrations of students with disabilities in college is um, are that they must disclose their disability themselves. There's no child find, they have to call or physically go to the Disability Student Services Office and say, I am so-and-so, these are my needs, here's a copy of my evaluation. Um, there is a documentation requirement. It must be current and oftentimes requires retesting at the end of high school. So connect with your um, student's uh, case manager and um, check in on what um, might be needed at the school your student's looking at and see if there's any testing requirements. Also, um, it's different being educated among the whole student body versus a, res versus a resource room with a small teacher to student ratio. And possibly the most frustrating thing for students is that they're going to be pushed to advocate for themselves. So really encourage your students to be advocating for themselves and their needs right now um, so that they become familiar with this process because it will be an expectation at college. Um, another frustration can be the general lack of knowledge of their own disability. It's important that students know what their disability is, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, knowing these will help them better be able to advocate for themselves um, and help students to be aware of what their own responsibilities will be at the college level and how, um, for instance, if your student's living at home, what you're willing to support them in and what they can get supported from the school. Um, um, the students experience legal challenges with accommodations or access, um, depending on the student's needs and the understanding or not understanding of what the college could actually provide. Um, it's also frustrating to have less parental involvement. Parents aren't calling a checkup, so parents won't be um, able to tell their children, you know, you need to turn these five assignments in. It will all be on the student. Um, and we want the student to be socially involved. So um, encourage that. We don't want that to become a big frustration. Um, we want students to feel welcome and um, that though they belong on campus and, um, and that they have friends and that's a place that they um, want to be. So a couple um, tips on what can you do to support your student now. Um, some of them I've already stated, but um, it's really important that you and your student visit college campuses. Like I said, many of them are having virtual tours. Um, encourage your student to ask questions. If they don't wanna ask you, have them ask their counselor, their current teachers. Um, what did you enjoy about college? What did you not enjoy? What do you wish you knew ahead of time? Uh, if your family knows other college students, have them connect with those people and have your child ask um, them questions. Um, again, work with, um, helping your uh, young adult to learn to advocate and advocate well. It's important to have strong self-determination skills. And then also, like we mentioned earlier, um, students need to get used to using typical college accommodations. Um, if your student has a lot of accommodations, know that it's possible some of them won't be offered when they go to high school. I'm sorry, when they go to college. Um, another way to support your student is to have them actively involved in participating in the IEP. If your student can lead the IEP, that would be fabulous. This will give your student an opportunity to practice their self-determination skills, um, explain their disability, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and what they need to be successful. Have your uh, young adult meet the disability student services staff and know where on campus to access mentors and other support systems. Um, make sure your young adult can describe their disability and how it impacts them. I really, I can't emphasize how important that is. Um, and then make sure your student knows how to access um, accommodations. Um, specifically ask the Disability Student Services offices at the schools that your student's interested in, what requirements they have, what accommodations they do and don't give, because not all schools offer the same accommodations. And then also, um, 
professors and instructors really enjoy it when students talk to them. So encourage your students, especially in areas that they have a strength and are interested in, to get to know their professors and go to office hours. Sometimes um, classes are graded maybe on four or five um, sessions. And so if you go to the office hours, your student will be able to really get to know the professor and the professor will, will know, okay, this student really is vested. They are interested. Um, it's good to have that rapport. So that is what I have right now. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, if um, I can't actually see the chat, so. Um. Thank you, Abby. We don't have chat on this one, but we do have Q&A. Right now, we don't have any questions that are on our Q&A, but if our audience members do have a question, please put it in that Q&A at the bottom of your screen and we will answer them. We normally will wait till the end to answer them, but if something comes up to clarify what, a, what our presenters are saying, please don't hesitate and put that uh, question in your Q&A. Abby, great information. I know that having a child who had a disability himself, this would have been great to know before we went he went off to college. Do you see what I said? We went off to college because that's how it feels when you have a student who has any type of a disability. It's a hard thing to let go. So thank you for those tips. Our next presenter is Monique Gilmore. And again, she's a nationally certified school psychologist, and she is going to give you some ideas on ways to fund your education, because that can also be a huge uphill climb. So Monique, I will pass this off to you. Hey, it's so nice to meet everybody virtually, and I'm so happy that we're all getting together and talking about this. It can be a daunting task going forward and organizing how to make this transition to post-secondary options happen. So the, the title of my presentation is The Journey Towards Post-Secondary Education, and it's a family guide. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit about me. I'm a nationally certified school psychologist. Um, I've been in education for 21 years. Five of those were spent at Clover Park. I have um, multi-generational autism in my family. And I had an IEP when I was in school and I set the curve in graduate school. So it is possible. Okay, so the first thing that I really want you to know is families don't have to go through this journey alone. There is help available to determine goals, potential paths of interest, and just figuring out what your student really enjoys. Finding internships, classes, work experience, volunteer experience that aligns with interest. There are organizations and help that can, that can make this journey so much easier. So determining what university, colleges, or vocational school is the best fit and paying for college, university, or vocational school. So there is a resource guide that will be included in this in which you will be able to um, access a long list of organizations, scholarships, and a bunch of different information that is going to be so helpful for you going forward. My families I work with love this guide. So we are going to start with a student, an imaginary student, for the purposes of an example, named Aiden. Aiden loves electronics and video games. He loves to talk about that. He wants to create video games. He's on the, on the spectrum or on the autism spectrum, and he has challenges with social skills and adaptive skills. But boy, when you get him talking about technology and video games, and there's a high level of interest from the other party, wow, he has a lot to say. So first of all, there's the Pierce County Skills Center Summer School. This is great because they offer classes that align with DigiPen and video game development. Hey, let's start this now. Let's get it going. So that's wonderful. And you, you just have to be... Um, you do not, you can be a high school student and you can be a little bit past high school to be able to access this. This is great. Um, 16 through 24 is the age range. 
We also have pre-ETS. That stands for pre-employment transition skills. And this is very helpful to my families. Um, it is transitional support um, from the Department of Vocational Rehabilitation. It includes job exploration, self-advocacy, gaining work experience, independent living skills, post-secondary education counseling. And I mean, I think all of our kids, we can agree, <laughs> would benefit from some, from some independent living skills, right? When they move out of the house, things like checking our work schedule or a class schedule, you know, making sure an alarm is set, things like that. These guys are fantastic because they, they're available for ages 16 through 24. And so they can help your child. They'll come into your school. They'll work with you. They are a big help to my families and I'm so grateful for them. So um, if you, and all you need to qualify, your kid needs to have an IEP, a 504 or a documented disability. That's it. So it's wonderful. Now let's talk about the Educational Opportunity Center. Wow, what a wonderful resource. Okay, so they help with education planning and counseling. They help with applying to schools. Oh, what a load off for some of our families. Assistance with financial aid applications, financial literacy, <laughs> education, like how are we gonna manage our money to get this going? And um, they also help with scholarship navigation and support. So they're going to help you with finding different scholarships. Now, I provide a long list, a long list for you, but my goodness, there are so many. So there are many financial ways to be able to get your kid through this. You don't have to do it alone, okay? So how to pay for college. For our kiddo, there's the Organization of Autism Research, $3,000 each for a two-year or four-year university. There's an Insight Educational Scholarship. This applies for a kiddo who's in trade school, vocational program, college, or university, and the amount varies from year to year with each award. The Making a Difference Scholarship, $500. <laughs> the Google Lime Scholarship, this is for an undergraduate or graduate school who is pursuing computer science or IT degree. We are in luck because that's exactly what Aiden wants. So, and 10, let's see, it was $10,000, believe it or not, which is, I mean, very exciting. <laughs> There's also the Benz Fund Autism Grant. $1,000 can be applied to services and equipment related to a child's autism. You have to be 18 years or older, or younger, excuse me. I mean, if you can get, if you can have access to this, one of the things that my kids often have challenges with is um, is being able to being able to get their thoughts, which are often so intelligent and wonderful, on the page. So, like, I can, so one thing that this could be spent on, <laughs> right, is equipment because this provides services and equipment, equipment for a computer that has voice recognition recognition software updated. You know, when when they leave. We need to still, as a family, have our our computers, and they need a uh, they're going to need a computer to go with them. <laughs> so this is can be this can be very very helpful. And there's also the Bonte um, Aquindo Memorial Scholarship, a thousand dollars in the name of um, of a young man who died. Um, this is for a scholarship for undergraduate students who have been diagnosed with autism or or this is helpful, a close family member of someone who falls in the autism spectrum. So this could be, you know, your kiddos, if we could, this could be Aiden's um, sister and brother. Thousand dollars, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> so there's also Clover Park Technical College. So we've got our money, right? So we're like, we've had our organizations that are helping us with getting everything together. Now we have Clover Park Technical College. Um, these guys are fantastic because they offer more than 40 programs and it's real world, um, real world skills that they can utilize um, going forward in the technology field. Bates. Wonderful Bates. Okay, so Bates Technical College, they have an AAS in civil and environmental um, and computer networking 
system, cybersecurity, industrial electronics and robotics, and information technology. Oh, and software development. We'll take it. Um, there's the, the, the Tacoma Community College. I personally love community colleges for a variety of different reasons. One is it's so cheap <laughs> and you can get your AA at, you know, you can work towards those educational credits for a lot less money. I have, um, I have some different friends who have gone straight to state and some friends that did community and the amount of money they owed afterwards. Wow, what a difference. So I'm all about Tacoma Community College and colleges in general. And this is gonna be so great also because they have a tutoring center and an access center. What does this do for us? It helps us, the tutoring center, you can go as many times as you want, fantastic. Because sometimes our kids on the spectrum, they need that step-by-step -step support. So um, they also have the, tut so that we mentioned the tutoring center. Um, the Access Center is very supportive and wonderful, and they'll help you get the accommodations you need for your child as you go forward. Um, and, you know, you can get a, you can even get a bachelor level credentials in a specialized career field here. And technology is one of the things that they, um, that is available. Washington State University. Something that people might not be aware of is that they're, um, there is a social skills building group that they have at Washington State University. So you know how students on the spectrum, Aiden might occasionally um, feel some social anxiety or emotional dysregulation, right? Because there's so much social stimulus around us every day, it's a lot. And so the social skills building group can really help support him with this. Um, as he as he's going through Washington State University, they they offer as as the presentation before I mentioned they offer alternate testing note note taker support kind of like your own scribe right so you can have someone in there who will take notes for your kiddo if maybe they're not the best at getting those notes down as quickly as they need preferential seating we, as we mentioned a scribe or signed note taker that you can take to your classes and free drop-in tutoring. That's really great. Now, let me share with you just some of the different um, internship opportunities available. Now, as I mentioned, there are so many and I'm really trying to <laughs> reduce, um, keep it short and sweet because we could, we could talk for days. Um, this particular scholarship is entry point now, they're a summer internship program for college students with disabilities. What we're talking about is IBM. While IBM and Aiden's technology interest, this, this lines up wonderfully. Um, and so if he can have that summer internship, which means it's not gonna interfere when he goes to school, it can be wonderful for developing those contacts and also just some of the practical skills. Now, a part of being successful, right, is knowing the individuals you can contact. So when you have these, these um, internships, it really lines you up for, um, for success in the future um, by, by enabling you to know who are your people in different places. So that's really great. Now the Microsoft internship, I cannot say enough about Microsoft. Okay, <laughs> so they have a 12 week summer internship. It is for first and second year college students. And they especially encourage students with disabilities. Something that people may not be aware of is that they have a week long hiring process that is designed to make apparent the skills of students with autism so that you're not having to rely as much of those on the social processing. So they have that week long um, hiring process and onboarding to help describe to our, to, um, you know, uh, to the autistic individuals involved in my Microsoft or the individuals with autism involved with in, in Microsoft. Um, 
what exactly to do because like we mentioned sometimes our kids or sometimes individuals on the spectrum with autism they need things explicitly described they're not going to just intuitively pick up on it and i love how microsoft they really have a specific program to to allow that and that's the type of um i know for like my my family that's the type of organization i really want to um to have my to to invest in, right? Because they, um, they, and when you're putting your time into an internship or any work experience, you're investing. Time is money is everything. <laughs> so let's talk about student number two, Jessica. Oh, before I go, I also want to say that these different internships are pretty darn reasonable, okay, that we just talked about. Now let's talk about Jessica. Jessica is intellectually disabled. Um, she likes people in general. She's very social. She's very happy, kind of like me, right? <laughs> she likes animals and she likes to organize things. She needs routines broken down and repeatedly practiced to learn. She will get those routines down, but she needs to be shown, she needs them broken up into little pieces so that she knows it and has that practice so that she can execute the task. Now, if you haven't heard of Think College, you will love them. Um, they, it is, it's all about post-secondary options for students with intellectual disabilities. I really encourage all of my families to, to click on Think College as they're going forward because they are wonderful and, and so helpful for so many of my families. There's also Morningside. They have supported work services like summer internships, employment services, high school transition. This is for high school seniors. They provide all this support, you know, while the kiddo's still in school. And um, they have definitely shown themselves as um, an organization that I trust. And they it helps develop that self-worth and connection to the community. And when we're when we're having these things like summer internships, employment services, even volunteer experience in your field, wow, that really is important going forward for your kiddo, I found, or your young man or young woman, right? <laughs> they always say kiddos to us. Okay, so um, if, if, it's, if it's your own child, they'll always say a kid to you. Okay, so our old friends, let's bring pre-ETS back in because my goodness, we would, they have a lot to offer for, for this for this uh, young lady as well, including they can help with job exploration, gaining work experience, independent living skills, and post-secondary education counseling. Again, I love this organ I, I love this service for my families. Um, and I think learning those independent living skills are, are some things that a lot of my families worry about, you know, are they gonna be able to do these things? And what a better time than to work on this while your child is still young. I mean, they offer, you, they can be, begin this support. So at such a young age, right? And all we need is an IEP, a 504 documented disability. Back to our old friends, the Education Opportunity Center, um, they'll help with applying for, sc for schools, assistance with financial aid applications, and financial literacy education, scholarship navigation, and support. Now, the reason I'm repeating these, these two organizations, because it bears, <laughs> they, people tend to remember organizations if you repeat them. So people often need repeated information. So this is me being a school psychologist nerding out, but also because I really believe in them. Now, in terms of pain for um, pain for going to um, to extending um, this young lady's um, educational experience, this is a wonderful scholarship. It's called Ruby's Rainbow, and it's for students over eighteen with Down syndrome and who wish to attend a class or a program that will enhance their lives through education, employment, or independent living skills. It's up to $4,000 an individual. Um, they are fantastic. And it's available nationally. So 
There's also the Joe Clara's Memorial Scholarship. Who can apply? In, in, intellectually or physically challenged students who want to attend a U.S. institution of higher learning, $500 to $2,000 for tuition expenses. Something to know that if you didn't get, if you didn't meet the deadline for these, it's okay, there's next year. <laughs> you know, um, they, are, they come up again and again. And sometimes the first year, gosh, with everything going on, maybe you didn't access the scholarship but it's available in the future. And so, and, as, and there's also so many other ones. So anyway, um, this is, you know, every little bit helps and $500 for award for qualifying students with any type of disability. We'll take it, we'll take it. $500 is, you know, this is nothing to sniff at. <laughs> and this includes college, university, community college or vocational school. Um, and so they'll give you that, that little extra help, um, that, and I mean, from where I come from, $500 is not a little, right? So that goes a long way. There's also high, um, when we're thinking about, so now we're getting all our money, right? Now we're looking at the different colleges that would be available. So Highland College, this is a great place. It educates and supports students in increased self-advocacy, independence, and competence in setting and communicating their wants, needs, short-term and long-term goals. So they are there to guide and support them through the college experience and helping them get what they want, okay? It develops occupational and job attainment skills. They work on critical thinking, including self-reflection, so important for um, our individuals with intellectual disabilities because knowing yourself is, is, I mean, and every other <laughs> college age individual, right? Because knowing yourself is very important to understanding, you know, what is going to be your fit. And they also work on the interpersonal social skills at work, which is important. That's something that we continue to um, work on, you know, really most people throughout their lives and having this available can be very, very helpful can be very, very helpful. Um, there's the Bellevue Occupational and Life Skills Program. You can get an AA for Occupational and Life Skills. It's for students of, var of varying disabilities. And they're fabulous. They, um, their students develop a career path that includes their strengths, values, skills, and interests. So students participate in interviews, job shadowing, networking events, and mentoring. And what I really like about these different, these different colleges is that they actively involve the student and they help guide the student, right, through the college experience. And I think that's lovely. There's also Washington State University of Aurora. Oh, yes, I would definitely go check them out. They are fantastic. They can, they are an approved transition program, which means that they um, can assist with, um, you can get financial aid and apply it to them essentially. <laughs> and the, the program is for students with intellectual disabilities and developmental disabilities. They have individualized programs of study and education. They also work on social skills and vocational training. It's an individualized plan and there's on-site living arrangements available. So, you know, your kiddo could have the full experience and be there and have, you know, be able to participate in all the great things that college offers. Um, and, you know, even being able to stay there and having that support there. This is another program that bears went mentioning it's called invest and it's this and it's a post-secondary transition program for individuals with intellectual disabilities and um, you can gain a certificate that can be adjusted to fit the student's goals and career choice your kiddo can take technical classes and um, they involve their their students on campus in classroom and in the community and they build those skills so um, yeah, I think that it's just, it's a really, it's wonderful to know that these places are out there and th this is a possibility, right? And then there's also, I know I keep going on for days, but there really are so many options. There's the Seattle Central College Mainstay Program. 
This has one-on-one -on -one support services tailored to your child's specific needs. The, the employment team includes a job coach, employment specialist, teaching assistant, and rehabilitati rehabilitation counselor. Now, you do need to have um, the qualifications for this program is 21 years or older and have DVR services. So, and then there's back to Pierce College. You know, some of my families, they prefer to go through Pierce College and maybe audit the class, see if they like it. Um, I will say that Pierce College stands out as having a wonderful access center. I've worked with them for some of my kids um, and they're fantastic. So, um, so it, it can be super helpful just knowing that these things are out there. And, you know, what I always like to say is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that I think just knowing that the support is available goes a long way. So we have um, time for one more student. The student's name is Julie. So she's not sure of what she wants to do, which a lot of people aren't, that's okay. You know, at, at when they're in high school and even at the beginning of college, but she likes working with kids, art, helping others and learning about different cultures and countries. Um, she has a learning disability. She's two to three years behind her typical norm age peers in math. She has excellent reading comprehension and she has great ideas and thoughts. That can take a long time for her to get down on paper. She's changed schools frequently because of family situations. So there's been some gaps in her learning. Now, again, our old friends, we're gonna talk about pre-ETS, right? Educational Opportunity Center. Oh, but here is a new friend, Workforce Connection. Now our new friend, Workforce Connection, they are really great at developing um, opportunities for our kids to go out and gain um, different job experiences. And they will even, they'll even, they'll practice interviews with you, which is great for college and jobs and internships. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes for scholarships, sometimes there's some interviews involved. Um, so they, and they will even give you clothes for it, right? So that you're, so that you're ready to go. Um, the REACH Center is really wonderful. They have a computer room for job searches and other employment educational related needs. So they teach life skills like healthy cooking and financial literacy, and they offer a lot of community resources. So the REACH Center is, can be really great as a place for you know, kiddos to go and get, get support through this process. Okay, and the list keeps going, right? There's so many different things, so many different organizations out there to help us. The Metropolitan Development Center, um, this provides students with low, or this is, they provide employment and educational opportunities and it applies to students with disabilities. Now, um, typically to qualify, you do have to have a certain income bracket. Um, they help complete financial aid packets as well. So again, like as we're working with these different organizations, all the weight doesn't have to be on the family, right? So my goodness, do we have a lot of scholarships? There's the Allegra Ford Scholarship, $2,500 for a graduating high school senior with a learning disability and or ADHD. And it can apply to a two-year college, vocational or specialized program. That's really great. The Ann Ford Scholarship, $10,000. <laughs> this is for kiddos who have a, um, this is for kiddos who uh, are, are earning a, a bachelor's, okay? Who have a learning disability or also have ADHD. Preply is great. They were lots of different, lots of different sums depending on the disability. Um, it's primary, so it's three thousand, one thousand five hundred, and seven hundred and fifty dollars. It's primarily geared to students with learning disabilities. They're very helpful. So the P. Buckley Moss Endowment Scholarship, one thousand dollars. 
annually to one graduating high school student senior who plans a career in the visual arts. Now you may not have remembered Julie's profile, but she likes art. And hey, if she's pursuing that, this could be wonderful for her. And it can be renewed up to three consecutive years. Oh my gosh, $1,000 every like, <laughs> for every three years yes please right um and then also academy special dream scholarships for students with disabilities um you can be a full-time or part-time um student studying art and uh they're they're very i mean it, all these different organizations are here to help us through again you know when we're thinking about as we're going forward we want to be able to get the biggest bang for our buck and sometimes that is, you know, spending a little less at college at the beginning to build up some of our skills. Now, I remember Julie, um, she's a couple years behind in math, you know, she's moved a lot. And also, it's just something that is more challenging to her. So maybe she wants to build up an AA or even get a bachelor's at, Tac at Tacoma Community College, right? And she's also interested in education. So Tacoma Community College also helps a lot with that. Um, Pierce College, we already talked about everything that they can do there. This might be helpful for our girl Julie because they, they also have an AA or BA in early childhood education. And the University of Washington, Seattle, they have a program of educational leadership and school of interdisciplinary art and sciences. This might be the path for her, you know, after she gets some of those lower levels, lower level classes at a cheaper price than at another school, or maybe she just wants to go straight for this. Um, and, you know, given that she that she really um, enjoys art and enjoys people, maybe social work also might be might be nice. We also mentioned the glories of Washington State University. So I want to say it one more time because I really want you to feel after this presentation that you can go forward supported and um, get what you go forward in a way that's going to be helpful for your child and yourself and build build on your dreams. So if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I hope that this has been helpful in um, helping us all go together through this journey. Sorry, I couldn't unmute fast enough. <laughs> it has been very helpful. In fact, one of our uh, viewers has said, hey, is there any way we can get a guide to all these great resources? And I was so happy to say, yes, absolutely. So Monique has created that family guide that she referenced at the beginning of her presentation. We will be sending that out to everyone who registered for tonight's webinar. If you have friends who uh, missed out tonight, we will have this, we have recorded this webinar and we'll be posting it onto our YouTube channel. It does take a day or two for that to happen, but please um, have them reach out to us here in the school district office and we can send that guide. Uh, it's a wealth of resources. There's some live links that we'll send you. And if you registered that, I feel like it's value added. You not only got this presentation, but you get more and you'll get that, that guide. So is there anything else, Monique, you wanted to, to, to say to families? I love your um, calling all of our partners, our friends, because really it takes a village to get your kid to college, through college, out of college, and then on to whatever career path or journey they will follow after that. I, you know, I don't have anything really else to say, but if you have any questions specific to your child that you want to share with Holly Bokey, because I believe in this work so much, she can forward them to me and I will take my personal time to answer them. Okay. So I'm so happy that um, I could be a part of this. Thank you to you, Monique, and to you, Abby, some great uh, words of wisdom and pieces of advice. I 
I just really hope that our families uh, took that in. Again, this will be recorded. So if you missed anything, you didn't get joined in in time, please, uh, you can watch that at, at your leisure. Also, I would love for you if you would uh, spread the word. You know others who this may apply to. And as uh, both, I think, Abby and Monique said earlier, that it's never too early to start. Sometimes, um, you know, we have a ninth grader or 10th grader, we don't know what's going to be in store, but this is the time to maybe get some of those things lined up and ready to go. I see you nodding, Abby. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, just to reiterate what you said, that it's never too early. Um, have conversations with your young adults, your young children. You're going to have a job. What What do you think might be interesting? Um, you know, even from an early age, um, it's, it's good to have those conversations and expectations. And also it holds us as parents accountable that our kids will someday leave the nest and have, you know, continue to lead their own lives. But planning is really essential and um, planning ahead will really reduce the stress and anxiety for everybody. On the flip side, it's not too late either. If you're, you have a student who is graduating in June and no idea, and maybe some of these ideas will spark an interest. Also, um, many of our students, because of the pandemic, are considering taking a gap year anyway. So, so there's time still, if you haven't made a plan, to make a plan and use that family resource guide to help you with that planning. All right, Diane, is there anything else that you wanted to add? I know that um, we, as Diane and I have been working on this all year, bringing different ideas um, to our families because of the pandemic and We've realized that this has been a great way to showcase so much, um, so many resources and so much great information. And by being able to put it online and record it, families who may not be able to make it or because of work schedules or whatnot, they can do this at their own leisure. But Diane, anything else you wanted to add? I just want to thank our presenters tonight, Abby and Monique, really appreciate the valuable information on it. I know our families will um, appreciate that as well. And thanks to all the participants this evening. Appreciate your spending some time with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I know that the one person who worked her tail off was our interpreter tonight, Beatrice. So she, uh, thank you, Beatrice. You did a great job. Thank you to, to you for that. Again, if you have registered, we're going to send out that family guide to, to your email that you use to register for this webinar, and that will be coming to you tomorrow. So um, I don't see any more questions in our q and I'll give a, a last shout out to our families in case they do have something they wanted to ask. They can simply put that in the Q&A and we'll answer that. Um, most of that was clarification about how do I get my hands on those resources. You had a, uh, you both had a lot of great resources and tips, so I do appreciate that. I really wish that uh, many of our uh, our teachers were also watching, and we're going to tell them about this link because there's so much great information that they can share with their students as well. I see you both nodding. Okay. Actually, I think we're done. And I think that we did a lot in a short amount of time. So again, Monique, thank you to you. Abby, thank you so much for what you presented as well. Um, thank you for being my partner, Diane, as always, and Beatrice. And thank you to our families. This has been a tough year. You're hanging in there and you're doing a great job. So thank you for joining us for our Parent Academy. That's it for us for now. We will be back next month with um, a look at what to do when you don't know what to do. And we're going to be talking to one of the leading uh, colleges in the area, and that is Pierce College, and finding about more about what they have to uh, offer. So again, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.
Good night, everyone. Good night.